Welcome into today's broadcast right here at Cog Hill Farm. Now, Peaches wouldn't let Nugget into the house for this episode, so here's Jason, Brooke, and our chicken master, Mary Carl. What is up, everybody? This is another episode of the Cogcast Podcast, and this is episode 43. I knew that. Believe it or not, you I knew, knew it. That. We've had a lot of um, questions about... Is 42 your latest video or your latest podcast? And, you know, we did it again. What did we do? We didn't put out two in one week. Oh, talking about the podcast? Yeah. Uh, yeah. We're going to try to do better. <laughs> <laughs> We've been, um, it's just, just trying to get the house ready. Yeah, it just, time slips away from you and... I mean, you got a plan in mind, and then the next thing you know is, you know, it's eight thirty, and you know this is going to take an hour, and your child's tired, and yeah, and uh, and we've been trying to do them, bath, and we've been trying to do them during the day. Well, guess and what? We've had some crazy mornings. This morning, <laughs> I'm drinking coffee. <laughs> I've already had mine, <laughs> and that tells you that it's early. It is early. <laughs> Um, and maybe we, maybe this is what we'll start doing is doing them really early. I think that's the kicker. Because we had said that we were going to start doing them after we did the chores. Yeah, but I think we need to do them first thing. Before we do anything. Before we do anything. And that way we know it'll be behind us. Mm-hmm. And it kind of puts a, a stress on you when you know you got something you need to do and you just can't do it. Yeah. So I think we would feel better overall if, if we just did it and just don't worry about it. I think so. Just record it and get it out of the way and then we won't have to worry about it that's right so we have a new plan let's see if we can make it work plan j (laughs) we've already had plan a b c d (laughs) that's right (laughs) but what's going on on the farms oh yeah farms with a z uh (laughs) basically the same thing we're getting this place ready um and then i'm i'm the worst I don't, yeah, you're not as bad as I am, but you know, if we if we ever decide we're gonna sell anything, you know me, I'm just like, oh my gracious, we gotta do this, 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 <laughs> because it's it just I don't know, and I'm I'm not a perfectionist, but I don't know why it is I'm like that. Well, we had some visitors come. Um, <laughs> Well, I don't even know what day it is. Yeah. Friday night? We did have some come Friday night. Some some pretty important visitors. Mm-hmm. Can I say who it was? Sure. Keeping It Dutch, the YouTube channel. They and their family were on their way home from Disney, and they live in Oklahoma, so they stopped by Alabama, and they paid us a visit. And they just sold their house. And yeah. And she told me firsthand to quit worrying about she said this place is absolutely beautiful well we know that it's beautiful right. but we also see little nitpicky things that could be improved or you know need to be fixed yeah. and she said quit doing that she said quit worrying about it you know nothing's ever going to be perfect yeah because you, you know you may see that i don't know maybe a, a, a tiny paint chip on a wall or, yeah, or something. Yeah, you think that and needs to be touched up. And I'm thinking it needs to be touched up. And I we, guess I kind of treat it like the podcast. Y'all see me fiddling and moving yeah. and moving stuff in the background. And, you know, to me it's important. And then everybody else is like, y'all just leave it alone. But you know what I think about when when I see a paint chip? Yes, I want it to be fixed and I don't think it should be like that. But I think if I go and I touch that spot up, mm-hmm. then it might not match. And then I'm opening up a whole new problem. I got to paint the whole <laughs> wall because it doesn't match. Well, like Brandy said, um, Sean's wife, Dutch's wife, he, you know, she said that when, you know, they, the realist, the realtor was telling them, you know, don't worry about colors and stuff because, you know, they're with the people and they're like, you know, they're going to change the colors anyway. So, I mean. Well, nothing we're doing yeah. is, is changing colors for no, a potential but just for, buyer. No, but for the fact that the paint's not perfect or oh, yeah. there's something here or there. That's right. That's 90% right. 90% of the people come in and repaint it. And repaint it anyway. anyway. So, so yeah. But we've, we've got all the paint colors. So, I know when we take pictures off the wall, we're going to find imperfections. Yep. And, you know, that's part of buying a used house. Yeah. Unless you build something from the ground up, there's going to be little paint chips off the wall and you know um 
maybe a, a door handle that needs to be changed out. Right. Or, you know, just little little things like that. Well, after talking to them. It made you know, me feel better. It did make me feel way better. And I've kind of eased up a little bit. Well, maybe they need to come back next Friday and give <laughs> us a refresher. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you what's crazy about their family and our family. It is almost <laughs> a mirror. I mean, it's almost identical, guys. They had 10 acres, mm-hmm. bought 48, right at 40 acres. Mm-hmm. I think they said 38 and a half. So. S- just sold their house. Sold their house. Don't have a house on their new place. Don't have a place. And just bought a camper. Yep. And here we are, fixing to sell our seven acres, give or take. And we don't have a house. Bought 40 acres, <laughs> don't have a house. And we're. 90% sure that we're going to buy a camper. <laughs> we're actually going to go look when we finish this podcast. Yeah. Um, you know, I didn't know all of that about them. Um, you know, of course, we're friends and we follow them. But when you sit down and you talk to somebody, you learn a, not, a lot more. Yeah. So I didn't know that their land was 40 acres. I didn't know that their current property is 10 acres and it's just it's just crazy how similar they are very very similar very similar um now they had a barn dominium no it was a pole barn is what they call it okay so they had a pole barn house house. and they built it to live in while they built their other house and so so they're going back with a traditional style house this time um we're still leaning towards the the barn dominium and but yeah, that's that's kind of that's kind of where we are. But it was just it just blew my mind how closely related we are, and just weeks they're like a couple of weeks ahead of us, pretty much. Well, she said <laughs> um, we can be your guinea pig, yeah. and we can let you know how living in this camper is going to work out because they haven't actually done it yet. But they he- just got it. Here's the difference: they have three girls. Yes, we have one girl. So they did buy a camper that was big enough to feel like the girls had some privacy because um, I think they're 7, 11, and 12. Yeah. And so, you know, the the older ones are getting to that age where they, they want to be by themselves a little bit. Right. So they bought a, a big one with enough room where they can close doors and feel like they've got some privacy. And with the three of us, a, a smaller one would be sufficient because we would still have an area for Mary Carl to be closed off. Here's Here's the difference. They got three girls, and we got three birds. Oh, yeah. So maybe we ought to get one that has an extra room we can put <laughs> birds in. <laughs> well, okay, so after they visited, Mary Carl was just over the moon with the girls. Oh, They're my just gosh, Wonderful y'all. kids. They're just like Mary Carl, with the exception of that I don't think they're so over the top about poultry as she is. I, I mean, I think they're interested, but yeah. not as far as, you know, live, sleep, ble- breathe. But I, I will say this about it. You would have thought that they were being best friends for 11 years. Oh, yes. I, I mean, mean, it was like after two they, peas in a pod. They all, or three, four peas in a pod because yeah. there was four of them. And it was just, they all got along so well. The next morning after they got home, they had already been in contact with me, Carl. And, yeah. and you know, t- talking back and forth. It, it just, I mean, it's like. Friends that we didn't know existed for her, and we feel like that's never going to change. And, and also, why well, I think they, because they're great people. Oh, yeah. They're great people. But they were they're all of us close to the same age. Yeah. They, they, share we the all, same interest. Same interest. We're both homesteaders. Right. Uh, kind of, you know, but the YouTube thing, that's also they can relate. Because that's Mary, right. Because Mary Carl said they were talking about what kind of, you know, gifts they have gotten oh, yeah. and, and all yeah. that kind of stuff. So it was so they had, you know, YouTube conversations, which Mary Carl doesn't have that ability. Doesn't have that ability because most children, you know, around here or anywhere or their, their family don't know home, how to relate to that. Well their 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 dads or moms or whatever have regular jobs and yeah. so they don't know how to relate to, you know, their daddy staying home and Right. You know, it's the same thing. Same thing. So but yeah they had a they had a Unbelievable time. Matter of fact, it was, and I know Dutch was 
dragging the kids back in the car because they, <laughs> they weren't ready to go. And Miracle, I know when they said, we got to go home, I heard Miracle say, oh, and it was <laughs> well, the, dark. <laughs> his, his girls weren't quite ready to go. And That's what I'm saying. He was dragging them. And I made the comment. I said, girls, y'all can just stay here and we'll take y'all back to Oklahoma next week. And they were all like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, it was so funny. Yeah, it was, we all had a great time. They mentioned to us that there's a big meetup in Oklahoma at the end of August. Mm-hmm. And so our wheels started turning and they said, you know, we don't have a house for y'all to stay in, but we can meet up at a hotel and yeah. <laughs> we can all We could go out. visit them if we wanted to go to the meetup, we yeah. could. And yeah. so it was, yeah. So now our wheels are turning about possibly going to a third homesteading conference type thing. Yep, we're going to try to work it out. I can't remember to work what. It out. I think it's called Ozark. I think it is I Ozark. It, yeah, I know it's Ozark something. Something like that. Um, she's already sent me the information. So, um, you know, if if we can possibly make it work, I would love to do it. First of all, for me, Carl, to see the kids again. Yes. And second of all, just because. I mean, they're great people. Yep. It's somebody we're, we'll stay in touch with for a long time. I think so, too. And um, then again, you know, they're just a little bit ahead of us. They can keep us going us to what we can and can't do. I know it. They're definitely going to be our guinea pigs. What's going to work? <laughs> but he, here's what here's what um, brought to our attention. Okay, so Mary Carl didn't realize that they were going to live in a camper and build their house and such as that. And so when after they left that evening, we were all sitting down talking, and I said, I said, Mary Carl, I said they're going to live in a camper. Um, I said, does that make you feel like we may can do it? Because we want to talk about it and we want to know all options. Yeah. You know, if that's not something that that she's interested in, maybe we want to take a different route. You know, right. it's just we want everybody to be happy. And she said, yeah, mama, but what about my birds? Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm like, birds. birds. Okay. She has three birds and they're all in these big, nice, huge cages. Mm-hmm. And one of them never shuts up. He just, hello, hello, what are you doing? And that's Mondu the Quaker parrot. Mondu the Quaker parrot. He is constantly vocal. So I can imagine us, he's in a different room from yes. our bedroom. So at night, I don't know what he does, but I have a feeling he talks from time to time. And then Peanuts is buddy next door, which is a Conyer. And I bet Peanut is. Peanut says Peanut all the time. That's all and, he says is Peanut, yeah, but... Peanut, Peanut, Peanut. I'm sure Mondo, he's peanuts, peanuts probably, probably by like, the end of the day is like, man, would you please hush? And so <laughs> Zerk um, got kind of tired of hearing all that chitter chatter. Yeah. So we have moved him. Well, first we moved him to the foyer and we did some painting and we didn't want him to be exposed to the fumes. So we moved him to the bathroom and he loves it in the bathroom. Loves it in the bathroom. <laughs> he sits on the side of the bathtub when Mary Carl takes a bath and from time to time she puts his little feet in the bathtub and he loves it. So, there's where we are. There's no way three bird cages can fit in a camper. No. No way. Not in the cages that they're in. And we would not want them to be in cramped quarters. Right. So, we have a little something in our back of our mind that may work, but we still don't really know what the inside of a camper looks like. Yeah, it's been a while. I mean, we we got our little... um... Canned ham. Our little canned ham, the 60, early 60 64, model. I think. Yellowstone camper we did. Has no bathroom. Has no bathroom. Has we can't one live king in that. size bed. <laughs> we, no, we cannot can't live, live in that. that. Can't live in it. Um, I mean, we say we can't. If we had to, we could. But oh, it'd be a it shelter. Would be, but... It would be rough. Uh, And it's only like 11 or 12 foot long. So it's, it's not really very tiny. big. And so, and then when I was little, my granddaddy had motor homes. And, and. I just, we can't relate, you know, we, it's been a while, so we want to go look at them and get a feel of what campers are like now, and besides I, these vintage, and our Airstream. Yeah. You know, I mean, I've seen, know. I've seen plenty of campers as we've camped in our little canned ham at campgrounds, and I think, whoa, those things are awesome, but yeah. I've still never been inside. Never been inside. One. I don't know what the space is like, and we don't require a lot of space, but also we don't want to commit to something to live in and feel like we can't do it. Right. So uh, we're going to look and, you know, I told Jason, I said, it might be that we buy one and we start staying in it and just see how it works. Yeah, we may do that too. Just see how it works. And then here's the other thing. We got my mom. We got, we got mom. Um, So (laughs) there's, there's options there. Um, 
and one of the options is is that we buy her a small camper and she stays in a separate camper uh the main you know we talked about it we even talked about maybe buying a, a mobile home a big mobile home we all could stay in it but she has four cats and we have three dogs that stay inside. <laughs> and our dogs have never been, have never mingled with cats. They've yeah. seen them outside the fence and they love to bark at them and let them know that they're here. But it's not going to work for them to live together. No, and I don't think our dogs would actually do anything, but it would just be disruptive. And I would think the cats <laughs> had never grown up with the dogs. So, of course, the cats are probably going to go crazy. Yeah, it'd be more so, so I think, the cats being scared out of yeah, the wits so too. of the dogs. And, you know, eventually it would calm down, but I don't think I could make it through that adjustment. No, because we'd have three dogs and four cats living in a in a, in a, in a mobile, mobile home. home. Yeah. And, and then, then another thing is mobile homes aren't cheap to move. Yeah. And so we would pay, you know, to have it moved onto our property. Well, it's not something that we would need permanently. Right. And then we would have to turn around and try to sell it to recoup some of the money and then you know, they have to pay to move it. So, right. y- you know, I feel like buying a camper, somebody can come hook up to it. Right. And, and the, the money wouldn't be as big of a deal as if you were trying to sell a mobile home. Yeah. Cause you're, you're talking a lot of difference in money <clears throat> between a mobile home and a camper. I mean, it's yeah. just way difference in money. And especially if it was, if it was two, that might equal the price of a, of a mobile home, but it doesn't, mean that we couldn't recoup our money from it yeah we'd have a way easier time selling a camper compared to a mobile home so that's why we're leaning towards the camper yeah and it may be that um that we keep ours who knows you know the one that we live in we we might end up keeping it and then you know mom of course wouldn't ever want to tow her she may want want to (laughs) she might want to put a hitch on the back of her car grandma camping life (laughs) she could start her own youtube channel oh goodness (laughs) Now you're talking. We'll go over this with her off camera and see what she says. She'll probably watch the podcast or listen to it, so she'll hear it. Uh, she's going to get her hitch on yeah. and start traveling. Mm-hmm. Traveling granny. Buy her a diesel truck. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and she's going to watch YouTube videos and figure out how to hook it up, I guess. Yeah, she'll figure okay. it out. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, um, mm. <laughs> that got you sad. It did, it. and I had something on the tip of my tongue, and I don't know what it was. Oh, the Airstream. Yeah. Okay, so we have an Airstream. We have a vintage Airstream that we bought from an individual that had been sitting at a hunting camp for many years. Yes. Okay, so when we bought it, we had no plans of ever leaving this place. No. And we were going to redo it, and we are going to, you know, that's going to be our camping buddy. I mean, we're going to hopefully eventually be able to settle down enough to where we can take some trips. So we bought the thing. We brought it home. Mm-hmm. We took the shell off of it. Well, we gutted it first. We completely gutted it. Gutted it. Yeah. Um, then we took the shell off. And a uh, matter of fact, we took the shell off a year ago last week. Is that right? Yeah, because the video, I saw the, the video pop up um, in like some memories or something. And so... <clears throat> We went That's where to, we are now. Well, we went to North Alabama and we bought new axles. Yeah, we got new axles. Because we want everything to be legit. We want this thing to be back to, you know, the way it was original. Well, no, we're not redoing it to its original state. Right. But we want everything to be ma- mechanically back yeah. to where it was right. originally. We bought new axles. We had somebody fabricate wheel well covers, which was not cheap. Mm-hmm. And we've got a lot of parts sitting and waiting we've even got the air conditioner that needs to be put on the on the top to right um we've got all of that stuff stored because our plan was to put this camper back together well time's gotten away from us it has gotten away from us um you know a lot of things has happened since then well you have almost been off two months yep july the first which is one day next week i think um but we have not had any more time since you've been off than you did when you were working. Right. Well, because the main thing is, is we bought the new farm and then we're trying to get this place ready. Right. And so time has been really, 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 really limited. Yeah, really time, limited. Time has not been our friend. But no. um, Jason has went to the process of sanding all of the rust off of the frame of the trailer and yep. cleaning that all up. We have the product to clean the metal we have the product to coat the metal so we can get the 
subfloor back on and put the shell back on. And get the axles on. And get the axles yep. on. And I actually took it to somebody that does sandblasting who I had been in contact with for literally two months yep. and his blaster had been down. I didn't want to tow it further than, you know, Selma or right. near city. So finally he got his equipment back up and I took it over there and he sandblasted the tongue. And I told Jason, I said, look, I don't want a wheel, uh, a wire brush to go over this and this, this camper be absolutely beautiful. Except this tongue looks like it's, you know, <laughs> come out of a scrap yard. So I took it to him and had him sandblast it. And when I did that, I parked it up under the carport. Mm -hmm. And so it is sitting there waiting on us to apply the product to clean the metal and then coat the metal so it protects any potential areas from rusting in the future. Yeah, because the stuff we're using kills the rust and stops it. And then, you know, then it gets painted over with this certain stuff that most airstream people use and we've had it for a long yeah. time it's called pr por 15 i think that's what it's called that's what it's called because i actually <clears throat> did some reading yesterday to find okay. out how we were gonna apply this stuff yeah so we gotta get the shell back on this airstream so we can move it so we can move it now we're not gonna try to work on it right now while we're i mean we're gonna work on it we're gonna work on getting the frame coated yeah and we're gonna work on putting the subfloor down but as far as any interior work and possibly living in it we don't have time well you know i've even thought about you know i'm gonna leave the it's got framework inside of it that we built when we took the shell off to keep it you know stationary stationary and it's very 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 i mean it to keep it from moving or shifting or, or wobbling or anything like that so it can't go anywhere so you know we've even said we could even possibly get it on the trailer we haul the tractor on and get the shell over there but now also i'm thinking we'd have to jack it, it back up when we get over there is that if we get the thing painted just put it under there maybe and, set it on top of it and get it back up we still would have to jack it back up and yeah back i want to go ahead and put the subfloor on if yeah. we can and then set it down and put all of our stuff that we have saved up to fix it inside of it well, that's a good idea and then go park it over there that's a good idea we could do that we still would have to leave the framework yeah, 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 yeah. I, I realize that. I realize that. But, yeah. You know, that's been a big um, hmm, uh, worry, yeah. I guess you would yeah. say, because we know that we can't leave it here. No, we can't leave it here. We can't leave it yeah. here. We can't and, leave it here. You know, we've even thought about possibly selling it. Yeah. Because we feel like we got too many irons in the fire, and I don't want to sell it. You I, don't want to sell it. You know, I, don't I mentioned it. Sell I mentioned it this week, possibly of us selling it and getting rid of it, and. You I don't want to sell it. You don't it. want to sell it. So I just feel like in our future, we will have time. And it is something that we would enjoy doing if yeah. we had time. Yeah, I think so. And then we would really enjoy it if it was fixed. Yeah. I think once everything settles down. It's just we got so we'll much see. on it. And <clears throat> and I feel like if we did let it go, we would regret it. That's very possible, too. And, too, I'm also thinking that if we do, you know, live in a camper, I don't know what, you know. I don't know anything about campers. I don't know. You know and that's why we want to go today. Well, you know, the campers have 12 volt systems and 120. Uh -huh. um, they have uh, propane. Backup. Usually, your refrigerators are both propane powered and electrical. And, you know, this kind of stuff I don't know anything about. You know, I was just going to just make this airstream where it was just like I did the, the Yellowstone, just runs off 120, and that's it. But, you know, campers are not built that way. The campers have both systems. and So you can boondock, right? You can boondock. And so... What that means is hook up to a... Well, you don't have to hook up to anything. You don't have to hook up anything. You can go and park it in right. Walmart parking lot, and you won't have to have any electrical hookup because it'll run off the batteries. Run off the batteries or your... You could, yeah, run off your batteries. That's basically And your refrigerator it. could run off your propane. Yes. Because propane doesn't require electricity, obviously. Correct. So... I sound like I'm smart, but I'm really not. Um, <laughs> so <clears throat> I, I feel like we've got so much invested in it, and I'm not talking about financially. Um, so much thought, so much research, so much. And we have products here, too, that can make it livable. I mean, you know, we've yeah. got a lot of stuff for it. Yeah, we do got a lot of stuff for it. So I feel like we'll hang on to it. It might not be pretty sitting on our 40, but... I feel like we can park it maybe in an inconspicuous place and cut some limbs and, you know, maybe stick them in the ground yeah. around it and form a little shield so it won't be too noticeable. Won't be too noticeable. Well, we got <laughs> roughly 
40 acres to hide it on. Okay, I think we can hide it. Because <laughs> the first thing you see right now when you come down our driveway is an airstream that's up in the air. Yeah, it is one of the first <laughs> things you see. And it gets on my nerves because it's been sitting there for a year. It's been sitting there. But it's nobody's nobody's fault. We can't do any better than what we're doing. Right. So, what you got? Well, we do have some huge news. Some huge, huge news. And that is Nugget Sister is back. Nugget Sister is back. Um, we had talked about it in the previous podcast. Yeah, it was 42 that we talked about it. That um, our friends at JK Farm, where Nugget Sister and Brother live, uh, the sister, you know what the sister's name? Um, Goldie. Goldie. Goldie was outside, just like, you know, they, they got a huge, huge farm, like 300 acres or maybe even more than that. Just immaculate farm. The emu stayed around the house, you know, just never went anywhere. And they were out there with them. And then 10 minutes later, they got a phone call from a neighbor that was two miles away and said, hey, your emu just ran through my yard. And they had literally <clears throat> just been outside and, and seen both emus and nothing, nothing happened. It was not storming outside. Yeah. We don't have earthquakes in Alabama that are of sizable notice. However, animals do have... Right. There was a lot of comments that said, could it have been an earthquake? Well, there was somebody that said that they had tested some bomb or rocket in Daytona, I think's what it was. And that it, that uh, they were Thinking saying that, that it had caused some disturbing. some minor earthquakes throughout the southeast. Was it during that time? During that time. And, huh, and interesting. He was, he was wondering if that may have caused it. You know, maybe we couldn't feel it, but maybe the animals could. I don't know. Hmm. That's interesting. Yeah. But um, anyway, so she was missing for three days. Yeah. Three days. And the male just hung his head. He, They could tell that he was, you know, in distress because his wife was not there. And they looked everywhere. They contacted everybody that they could possibly contact. And they had lost hope. They felt like she wasn't coming home. And I kept, of course, giving her positive, you know, information. I think she's coming back. And I read all the comments on the post. And a lot of them said, she'll be back. She'll be back. And then the day that, that Goldie came home, somebody had sent me some information. It was actually on a comment from the podcast. And it said, check this out. Mimu the emu returns after being lost after a storm. Yeah. And it was a little YouTube thing. And so I watched it and I sent it to Miss Kathy. And it was a storm that had broken a place in the pen of this emu and this emu was like 20 years old and so it was the first time that it had ever left the premises ever ever when that tree hit the fence and he was able to get out he went missing and the lady said he would never come back he would never you know she just really didn't have any hope that he would she hoped he would come back but she really didn't feel like he would and so if I remember correctly, a news crew came mm -hmm. and they were covering the story. And as they were covering the story, they look over in the bushes and there's Mimu looking, popping his head over. He came back. Came back while the news crew was there. And so I sent that to Miss Kathy that morning and I'm bush hogging on the 40 and I get a text and I look at my watch and I just saw it was her and it was a long text and I thought, ooh, I better look at this. <laughs> so I stopped and I turned the tractor off and I read her text and it said, Goldie is home. That is and I could, unbelievable. I absolutely could not believe it. It I, is unbelievable. I said, oh my gracious, oh my gracious, oh my gracious. I didn't crank the tractor up for like 15 minutes. I was just grinning from ear to ear. I was so happy. <laughs> I said, I could just cry. And she said, the farm help did when they saw her. They literally cried. Ain't because, that something? Um, you know, they had just lost hope. Yeah. They felt like she wasn't oh, coming Oh, I home. would. I you know would I, I would be like, he's the nugget's gone. If he be gone for three days, I would never expect him to come but back. But I, I don't know why. I just, I just had a feeling she was going to come back. And I think the reason I felt that way is because her mate was there. That is true. I didn't think and about that. Miss Kathy said, do they have a sense of home like a dog? I wonder if they do. Well, this isn't something you can Google and find out. Because when you type in, does an emu have a sense of home like a dog? Y'all should see the responses. <laughs> it's nothing what you want to know. Um, so there was no information out there. But we have information that they can find their way home. Found its way home. That's amazing. And that Mimu, I don't know how far it went. Yeah. Nobody knows because, and nobody knows how far 
Goldie went. The neighbor was two miles down the road. So how far did she actually go from right. their farm? Who knows? Who knows? But she said she was very weak when she got home. And, you know, of course, they probably made her, her favorite food and 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 rubbed her down real good. But she's recovered and she's back on JK Farm. And let's hope she never leaves again. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. <laughs> but that, I, I'm just, I was ecstatic i couldn't believe it when you told me i could not believe it well, you i absolutely were, could not believe it you were weed eating or something yeah. at the time and um i made you cut the side by side off i said goldie's home goldie's i couldn't home. believe it i cannot believe it still can't believe it be honest i know with you. it i know it i know it and somebody commented if they're three I, i'm almost positive their 300 acres has some type of fencing but it, with that much acreage there's no way you would couldn't possibly know if there may be a break yeah. at some point. Yep. Or an uh, emu can jump. I'm here to emu tell you Emu can jump. They say that you're supposed to have them in a six or seven foot fencing. Well, you know, I was reading the other day that you can have like 20 emus on one acre. Really? Yes. So they don't require a lot of space, which is crazy to me. Well, you, you know, well, like there's, you know, we've been over there. Theirs there, don't go very far. Well, I mean, they stay around that little area. And like Nugget, I mean, he's happy as can be in his one walk, little area. Yeah, Nugget walks around, but he pretty much stays in his little pen now. And well, he has the ability to go where he wants to when we let him out. But he, he does doesn't. have the ability to go where he wants to. He just and doesn't. If Nugget wanted to, he could just hop over that fence. I'm he sure he could. He could hop over the fence. And I, I was stunned when I read yeah. that they don't require as much space as you think. But as for fencing on that property and her being able to get over it, she could. I have yeah. no doubt because we've seen Nugget on his runs yeah. and we have like some drainage ditches and stuff. And he clears that like, like Spider-Man trying yeah, to yeah, he just, go from one building to another. He does clear it. I wish I could catch it on camera, it but it's so hard. It's hilarious. But he's just, he's just, just in stride and it's just like it's slow motion. Yeah. Just like Michael Jordan, you know, going yeah. for a dunk. He's just. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's crazy. I tell you what else is crazy about him is that you can't hear him walk. No, he's very, he's very. I don't know. You what can't the word even walk. Secretive, I guess. He'll get on the edge of the woods a little bit, and you know the leaves and stuff. You and so I could see how they could just disappear. Well, and you wouldn't even fast. know they were there. Look how fast he can run. Oh yeah, he can run. If fast. something spooked him and oh, yeah. he wanted to go, he could be a long way in a short period of time. Short period of time, and I could get lost very easily. And so that tells me, you know, when Goldie, whatever spooked her. I, we don't know right. what it was, but when whatever spooked her, in her mind, she was scared, and she just ran. Yep. You know, that's fight or flight. Right. And, and she ran, and, you know, she just didn't turn back until she felt she was safe. Yep. And who knows how far she got. Who knows? Could have been a butterfly. Could have been. <laughs> Those butterflies are vicious around here. <laughs> no, For those are, they don't like butterflies. I tell y'all something <laughs> funny about butterflies. Um, we've put a bunch of sod out, so we've been running sprinklers. And we had a sprinkler going. It was kind of on the side of the goat pen. Well, ducks love water. And so some of Mary Carl's ducks had found their way into the goat pen to kind of bathe in that puddle that mm -hmm. they had made from the sprinkler and one of them her her name's sparkle she's like a little call duck mix she's a tiny duck probably about a mallard size or a little bit smaller she's in the goat pen she's enjoying bathing in that water runoff and there's a butterfly in there did i tell you this yeah there's a butterfly in there and the butterfly is continuously landing on the duck's back because the duck's wet so the butterfly is trying to get the moisture off of the duck the duck thinks the butterfly is trying to kill her <laughs> And the duck is literally, I mean, jumping up in the air, just going nuts. Has her beak open. <laughs> you know, doesn't yeah, know how to yeah, get away. Yeah. This thing's after me. This thing's after me. And by the time that I, you know, got tickled, I, I didn't have any more storage left on my phone to video it. Yeah. But by the time that I got finished laughing, there were two butterflies after her. And that poor thing, she could not figure out how she got in that pen. But those butterflies were fixing to kill her. That is, and Nugget's the same way. Y'all know how big Nugget is. He's scared of a butterfly. So scared of the butterfly. Stan and Kathy over at JK Farm that have Nugget siblings sent me a video last summer 
of their emus, and they're terrified of butterflies too. Yes. <laughs> they get to jumping up in the it's air, turning sideways, turning sideways. They are just like this thing is fixing yeah. to kill me. It is funny. Butterflies, butterflies, and it, every time we see one and nuggets out, we're like, oh my, there's a butterfly. <laughs> Because we know what's fixing to happen next. It's so funny. He literally comes up off the ground and hisses it. Ah, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Butterflies. It's funny. It's hilarious. You want to answer some questions? We will answer some questions. I think I'm done with <clears throat> Oh, I was going to say this. <clears throat> I'm a little, I've been hoarse for the last couple of days. I have no idea why. Well, it's after Dutch came and I think you did a lot of talking. I think that's what it was. He filmed a lot. I did a lot of talking and I think that's. That's what happened. The next morning when you woke up, you were you were like you had been sick for a week. Nobody here has been sick, Nobody's thankfully. Been sick. Thankfully. We've had, you know, we, we get so, we get a lot of gifts from you guys, and we cannot thank you enough, but I had two that I wanted to point out because they come from across the pond. We forgot that one. Which we'll one? show it on the next one. I don't know where you put it. What was it? The keychain. Oh, Sure did forget that one. We'll show it next time. It come from Switzerland. It did. We've got some emu coins, which are, which, you know, that's the Australian bear. I don't know if it's going to focus on it or not. But these, I guess the emu is such a big part of their culture over there that they're actually on their currency. So somebody sent us from Australia. And look at the little packaging that it came in. Is that not? Great. <laughs> That's Nugget. I'm convinced. That's, That's nugget. nugget. So they did send us those. That one's so funny. I, don't, I wish I could get it with focus on it or not. But anyways, it's the emu poking his head around the side. But um, that we thank y'all. thought that was so cool. And we had another one from across the pond sent us this awesome book. And I just got it. So I ain't started reading it yet. But it is Regenerative Agriculture. So Thank you guys so much, but I wanted to point these out because these come a long ways away. They did. This one was actually... Um, this one was... Uh, well, took it was, us some time getting here. It was sent FedEx, and FedEx doesn't deliver to a post office, and she didn't know that when she shipped it out, and so we thought it was lost in the mail. We didn't know what our special package was mm -hmm. from her, but we knew that we had to try to get it here, and... So we went, she went to a lot of trouble to get it directed to our house address and it's here and we, we love it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We will enjoy both of those. Uh, getting to some questions. Do we have a PayPal account? Uh, yes, we do have PayPal. Um, it is, and I'm assuming, uh, I'm assuming that they wanted to. Fund us in, Fund some, us kind in some kind of way. I don't. I'm not quite for sure. We do have a PayPal account. It is Jason at thecockhillfarm.com, and that is our PayPal account. Can to you Cockhill put that Farm. at the bottom? Yeah, I'll put that at the bottom. We're not yep. asking anybody for no, any, uh -uh. any anything, but but, but it, that question has came up a couple of times. It has, so. and you know you hate to keep skipping over something that you continuously see. So right. you know that's our PayPal, and we're not asking for anything. So. Um, <laughs> Somebody wanted to know because in the video, the YouTube video, where we go over to Piper's family's house and feed their critters, mm -hmm. Piper has a lone duck and he has been just, well, we didn't know if he was lonely or not. He seems happy as he can be. Yeah. But he lives there alone. And, and we locked him up in his kennel at night because she, Piper is afraid something will get him. And so he doesn't live in the coop with the chickens. He lives in a dog kennel on the outside. Mm -hmm. And so we went over every morning and took care of the critters. And we went back at night to lock Chris up. Lock Chris up. Lock Chris up. And um, Mary Carl has had a female that she would like she would have liked to have given Piper for Chris to see if he would be happier with a mate or with a friend. And so the question was, did we give Piper a female for Chris? And we did. Yes. We did. Um, when they got home from the beach, I think it was like the first day they got home. Yeah. We packed, I can't remember what her name was, but anyway, she's got a new name now, like Crystal or something. Oh, um, the, the, yeah, I can't remember her name The new now. duck. Yeah, so, the new duck. Uh, Mary Carl and I took the female over in a little cat carrier and we sat the cat carrier down in front of Chris's dog kennel <laughs> and he was out walking around by that time and we let her out and she literally followed him everywhere 
it, it initially wasn't that he was so interested in her. He was like, what is this thing? Yeah. And she followed him everywhere. That's funny. And um, since then, they live on a pond or a lake. Since then, Chris has started leading her down to the pond, and they, they're they're together. Good. So happy ending to that story. Chris is no longer alone. He has a wife. And then that girl, um, she was like the attraction here. Mary Carl told me she's got to go because all the boys like her. Interesting. And she said that she was getting kind of abused here yeah, because yeah, yeah. it's like all the males flock to her. Wow. So she didn't want anything to happen to her here by being the center of I attention. And so now she just has one man, and I think everybody will be better. Mr. Chris. Mr. Chris. <laughs> Let's see here. How do we fare in the tropical storm Claudette? Uh, we did okay. I mean, we didn't have... We didn't we, have any any damage or anything. Mm-mm. We got a lot of rain, and well, the wind was, you know, a good bit. I say it, wasn't it was bad, breezy, but it, it was, was breezy. It, it was. I think we had like thirty five mile an hour winds, so it was it was a lot more wind than we typically have around here. But um, no damage. They were predicting a lot more rain than what we actually got. Yeah. And so I'm kind of glad that that, um, I mean, I hate it for anybody that, that had flooding conditions. Right. But I'm glad the flooding stayed away from here. Because it, yeah, it did stay away from here. But we did have a lot of rain. We um, did. And it was good for our side that we just put out. It was good for our side. Everything's greened up. Yep. Everything's looking good. And Speaking of sod, we are, we're up to 18 pallets 18 now. pallets is what we <laughs> put, put out. we put out 18 pallets. And I was thinking last night, I was trying to figure out about how much we needed yeah. to go. Yeah. And I'm thinking probably about eight more. Okay. What do you think? I think you're about right. So um, 26 pallets in all, maybe, yeah. maybe finish <laughs> Finishing That's up. a lot of grass, but it looks beautiful. It does really look good, and we've had some like Dutch and his family, and we've had some other people come over since we've put the sod out, and it really does make a huge difference. <laughs> and everybody's like, their mouths just drop when yeah, they come they in. Yeah, they think we have so, a gardener. Yeah, and, it um, looks that, good. Dutch here, kept on saying, look like a what do you say, like a national park <laughs> <laughs> or state park. He's when he kept telling me it's pretty. I mean, when you come mm. down the driveway, it's like. You yeah, because it is. It is nice and green. We've been it's babying really it. Pretty. So, yeah. It's really pretty. Yep. Matter of fact, I saw you had the sprinkler going this morning. I did. So we are we are actively applying water yes. to it to keep it to grow in because we didn't put it all the way together. We left a little space in it. And it's already spreading. And that's how we do it because, you know, it saves us a lot of money. It does. And these are not perfect squares anyways because we're buying scrap pallets. Yeah. And, you know, it may, when you first put it out for the first few weeks, it may look crazy, but it will start spreading. And this time next year, it'll be full. It won't even take that long. It won't even take that long. But well, but if you keep it watered and, and and care for it, it'll it'll spread pretty quick. As somebody told me one time, if you water it and feed it, it's gonna grow. That's what they told you. They and gonna right. grow, it's and gonna they were grow. talking about turkeys. Yep. But uh, <laughs> that goes for anything. <laughs> if you water it and feed it, it's gonna grow. That's right. So the last three pallets that I got, mm-hmm. two of the three were crunchy, as I would describe it. It was crunchy. They were they were starting to dry out. They had. I picked it up Friday morning, and they had cut it Wednesday. And when I saw it, I thought, "Yeah, this ain't gonna work." And and this is it's because we're only paying in between thirty to fifty dollars a pallet. Yeah, so and this is this is what you get. This this side is two hundred and sixty six dollars per pallet. Mm-hmm. Because it's a scrap pallet, it's fifty dollars. Yes. So you take what you get. So we're buying five pallets for one. Five pallets for one. Yeah, pretty much. So we're getting five pallets, as what you would normally pay for well, one. Well, some of them are thirty dollars. Some so, of them are thirty dollars. So maybe you know more than that. Right. But um, it's good grass. It's called Zeon Zoysia, mm-hmm. and it's it's what we have put all over this property, and it's absolutely beautiful. It is beautiful. I it's mean, it does. It looks it looks great. It looks like a golf course. It's amazing to me how hot it has been lately, and how green the grass is. It's putting the water to it. Putting that water to it. <laughs> so we're we're gonna celebrate when we finish putting all this grass out. Yeah. <laughs> but it's um it sure is making a difference it on does. the way it things looks great. look. All right. So the next question is for you. Do you want me to tell you what the sure. question is? What type of dog is Arlo? Arlo is a miniature schnauzer. Um I've never wanted a miniature schnauzer, never thought about a miniature schnauzer. I think we mentioned this before in a podcast a while back, one of the really early ones. Um, 
I was wanting a dog. I don't have a dog that's my own. Um, all the I really don't have an animal, period, that's my own. You know, this is the Mary Cross or Brooks got her own dog. You know, your mom's got her cats. And I used to have a dog that was mine. His name was Moose. It was a male lab and has been my favorite dog of all time. And when Moose died a, a long time ago, I haven't, Before Mary Carl was I, haven't, I haven't had any more dogs. And so I decided that I would like to have another dog. I was wanting a French bulldog, but gosh, y'all, they're... <laughs> They're very expensive for one, and the main the main complaint about French bulldogs is that they pass a lot of gas, <laughs> and it's because their face is flat and they intake a lot of air. Oh goodness! So you know, you know, Brooke and Mary Carl thinks it's funny, and, and you're like, you're gonna pay a whole bunch of money for a dog that that toots all the time. So <laughs> I was like, maybe I'll not get a French bulldog, you know, especially the the. the the price of them is probably one of the is the main thing. Yeah. So I did these little. You can go online. What <laughs> dog breeds for me? And the miniature snails are kept coming up. We must and not have been like, too busy during this time because now I can't imagine us sitting down and doing a quiz as to what dog breed is best. Well, it was for us. in the middle of the night, so I think <laughs> it was through with everything and. And the miniature schnauzer kept coming up over and over and over and over again. I was like, well, I'm just going to Google miniature schnauzers. And, yeah, it seemed like it was the perfect fit for me. And lo and behold, that's not a popular dog at all in Alabama. It's not. Alabama is hunting country, <laughs> so there's a lot of short hair pointers. There's a lot of labs. I mean, that's the type of dog that you can just buy all the time here. Golden retrievers. Yeah. I mean, Poodles. miniature Miniature schnauzers not high on the list. I couldn't tell you when the last time I saw a miniature schnauzer yeah. was, much less, you know, tried to buy one. So we were like, I was like, well, we looked and there's like, there's no miniature schnauzers around anywhere. And you decided to look on Craigslist. Craigslist. And, uh, you know, I'm we're real particular about mm -hmm. animals and not buying from a puppy mill, so to say. Right. And, you know, good conditions and we won't pets to be spayed and neutered so we you know we were kind of hesitant about going to craigslist to look for a dog but when i typed in schnauzer something came up and it was about 30 miles from us yeah believe it or not about 30 miles from us and you called them and quizzed them and you can she i think she gave you her facebook page she and did. and so you were doing all this research behind the scenes and realized these people are great. This is not a puppy meal. This is a lady that has a male and female schnauzer, and she may breed them every other year. It's not like they were spitting out well, puppies. Well, actually, and... she had she had never intended to breed them. Okay. Her female was in heat, and she had the two separated. And her son came down, and I want to say it was Memorial Day. Her son came down, and he was walking around outside, and he let the male out. And oh, the male okay. got to the female, That's and it was a it was. total accident. And then the and other she thing, just wanted them to go to a good home. She wanted them to go to a good home, and her 16-year-old daughter was wanting, was saving her money up to buy a car. And so... The mother said, hey, if you help me with these dogs, and she's the one to start putting on crazy with she said, I'll give you the money. So the money went to the daughter to, for her for new her car. car. And for her car. there was like three of them. There was one that was absolutely gorgeous. It was platinum was the color of it. Just yeah. beautiful. But I loved Arlo, and I don't know why. Um, he was the... Uh, was he the runt? I don't think he was a runt. She had sent pictures of the puppies that were left. Yeah. And I said, um, she said, I'll meet you at so-and-so with the puppy. And I said, okay. So when she got there, she had brought two puppies and one that they were keeping. Mm -hmm. Well, I had already committed with your approval. Right. That this is the one we want. Yeah. And it was not Arlo. It, it was, was the, the other platinum one. one. Yeah. But she brought both of them. She brought both of them. Just so we could, you know, see. Oh, gosh, and she I thought it was three we were looking at. Maybe it was just two. It was three, but she, one of them they was, were keeping that third one. That's right. One. It was liver color. Yeah, that was the runt. Yeah. Remember? That's, that's right. why they were keeping it because gotcha. they were scared something might happen right. to it health-wise. So it was two of them. And lo and behold, once you got your hands on them, you just felt like Arlo was the man. I did. I just, we just connected. They were connected. both males. We so. just connected. So we got Arlo. Um, 
in all of us been my buddy ever since, and he, he knows he's my dog. I he mean, knows. He knows. I mean, he's he's one hundred percent my dog, and he knows it too because we do a lot of things together. Recently, since I got internet over there at the farm, the new farm, he goes with me over there every time now, and he he enjoys it so much. But what was happening was when we go over to the new farm. All those the schnauzers they cut them where they have that skirt and they keep the legs kind of long and they got a double coat and it's real curly and and it's like Velcro. So when Arlo was running around the pasture and he was getting so much stuff in his hair that you know I had told you that I think I want to cut him short and you're yeah. like and you at first you were like uh. You know, he's not going to probably, he's probably going to look a little funny. <laughs> I said, can um, you imagine what this dog is going to look like without his I skirt on? And I thinking to myself, you know, I'm really not worried about the way he looks. I just want him to be comfortable because when I got home at night, I was having to get it out. And he'll just sit there and let me get it out. But, I mean, I could tell he was not enjoying it at all because <laughs> it would just get, it would really get stuck. Their, their fur is different because it's like a double coat and it's just different. And it just, it hangs up in there. And so we got him groomed, and they cut him. And I've had some people say, "That's you know, not supposed to cut a snails or like." I know, I know, but in this situation, I'm more worried about the way he feels, yeah, more so than the way he looks. And so that's why Arlo's cut like that. So, <laughs> well, he's still cute as he can be. He is still cute. He looks a lot like Tramp on Lady and the Tramp. Now, I tell you what's funny is we can go outside a hundred times a day. And Arlo not asked to go out. Yeah. But as soon as Jason gets his backpack that oh, yeah. contains his computer and stuff to work on videos, Arlo says it's time to go. He automatically knows now. If he sees me grab that backpack, he knows we're headed to the forty to go work on a video. So he's he's I mean, he's ready. He's ready. <laughs> All right. That leads us to the question yes. is how many dogs do we actually have? We have in all, we have three inside dogs. A Shizu. A Shizu. Who was Mary Carl's dog uh, from when she was little. Mm -hmm. Dixie is approaching 10. Yeah, she's getting up there. She's approaching 10 years yep. old. Mary Carl's 11, but she got her when she was really little. Um, she actually helped with potty training. That's correct. And um, so Dixie's, Dixie's a, a Shizu. Mm -hmm. And... When we got Dixie, we had a 20-year-old Yorkie, mm -hmm. and the Yorkie passed away, which the Yorkie was my dog, and um, she really didn't want anything to do with anybody else but me. Yep. So, I was without a dog after Millie passed, and I was without a dog for, what, two years? Yeah, for a little while there, yeah. It's almost two years, I guess, and then... I had always wanted a Pomeranian. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. I just, I just, I just love them. And so my mom surprised me for my birthday and got uh, Gidget, who's a Pomeranian. And Gidget's awesome. Jason won't agree, but Gidget's awesome. <laughs> um, she has some flaws. She has, the, well, the barking is the only flaw. <laughs> other, other than that, I mean, she's, she's. She's really good dog. And she's, she's very energetic. They don't. They're, they're, when they wake up, their switch is on. <laughs> and they're wide open. And then when they go to sleep, the switch is off. And it's like that. It's like boom, boom. It's not like where they calm down. It's not. She, she's wide open until she goes to bed and wide open. I mean, It's, it's kind of like me. You know, I'm, a, I'm not somebody that can sit down. Doing mm -hmm. this is tough. I mean, I, yeah. I'm occupied by talking. However, if I'm sitting down and I'm watching TV and I have to be still because I have the choice to get up, yeah. I don't like it. Yeah. And Gidget doesn't either. Gidget doesn't either. So Gidget and I are kind of <laughs> on the same wavelength. Um, when I got Gidget, I, I actually thought about getting another one and having two palms. And now I'm kind of glad I didn't. I'm because, glad you didn't um, <laughs> If we live in a camper oh my God. and we have to have... Um, we, we will have the three dogs that live inside in the camper with us and that's going to be interesting. Yeah. But anyway, so we have Gidget, the Pomeranian, yep. Dixie, the Schnauzer, and Ar I mean, Dixie, the Shizu and Arlo, the Schnauzer. Yes. Then we and have, then we yep. have four outside dogs, four outside dogs, Sunny, who's Sunshine. 
who is, is lab mix, I guess you would say. Something like that. She come from the shelter now. She stayed inside for a while. She did not want to be inside. She loves being outside and she doesn't hardly leave the front porch. She doesn't. She's kinda um, like our <laughs> like our guard dog for the house. She is. And um She wouldn't hurt anybody, but she barks. She was unplanned. Um Sonny was at the animal shelter. We have a friend that's into rescuing dogs and stuff and works for a big rescue company. And she reached out to me and said, would you please look at Sonny? And like I said, we had no intentions of getting Sonny. And you went over there just to, because there was one lady going to get her. She'd been in the shelter for a year, had she? A year. Yeah. And one of the ladies that was affiliated with the shelter took her on a daily walk, took her to the yeah. cemetery and walked her. And, and she was she just had a heart for this dog. However, she couldn't take her home. Right. And um, super well mannered. Um, already they had already taught her sit, stay, all the commands. She was worried because this is a this is not a no kill shelter. Am I correct? Yeah, it's not a no kill shelter. Yeah. I mean, they have their. I think they had their limit on how long they would let them stay there, and, and she had exceeded that. Well, limit. exceeded the limit, and but she they was were an starting exception. to get worried. Yeah, they were starting to get worried because no one still had adopted her, and why? I have, the only thing I figure is because Sunny was not a puppy puppy. She was probably around a year and a half old. To, yeah, yeah. yeah she she had been right. there a year, That's so right. she was about a year and a half, I guess. Um, She's got one ear up and one, one ear, ear down. down. Wonderful dog. She's so well mannered. Loves just, the animals. Doesn't do it. That was their biggest concerns when she got here. She would probably kill chickens and stuff, but she doesn't. So she, she doesn't. told me to come get her and bring her home and see what happened. And so Mary Carl and I went to the shelter without Jason's knowledge, and we we got her and we put her on the little shelter leash and took her outside. And boy, she pulled us all around that parking lot. Mm-hmm. And I thought, oh goodness, she's not going to get along with the animals because she's so high strung. Right. Well, she was high strung because she'd been in the shelter for right, a year. Right. Right. And you know, you see daylight and it's like run. Yeah. So that's the reason she was like that. But we brought her home, and she was wonderful from She's day wonderful. one. We never had to tell her no. Nothing. She's so well-mannered, not hyper, not crazy, loving, loves everybody, loves all the animals, loves the cats, we loved said, all the dogs. <laughs> we said, she's got to stay. So that's how Sunny stayed. Um, we have a blue healer mix named Jewel, who also come from a rescue. Yeah. And so y- y'all can see we got big hearts. Um, and Jewel's wonderful too. She, Jewel's she's wonderful. Well mannered. My mama kind of took Jewel, and she's actually a house dog now. Lives in my mom's <laughs> with house with the cats. <laughs> with the cats, because Jewel loves attention, and she lived in our house, but yeah, we didn't we sit down enough for her to get the attention that Jewel's she, a lap dog. She that is. doesn't get she's in, your in lap. a big body. Yeah, big bodied lap dog. Yes, perfect for is, your mom. Yeah, yeah. so. Mama started letting Jewel in her house when Jewel went outside, and mm, we hadn't seen her since. Yeah, and Jewel's well mannered. <laughs> I've taken Jewel canoeing, and we she took sits Jewel in the to can- the beach. Took Jewel to the beach. Just sat there on the beach. She doesn't go anywhere. She'll run off. She's so she's super well mannered. Very good dog. Very good dog. And we dog. were so scared because we'd always been told that blue healers were so high strung, and that may be the case, but it's not the case for Jewel. Not the case for Jewel. But I mean, that leads me to believe that she's not a hundred percent. Blue healer. She yeah. looks it though. She does look but it. But we think we've seen some of her siblings and they have like hound dog ears. Yeah, so. they, they're floppy and but anyway, Jewel's an awesome dog and she's yep. well cared for as all of the other ones are. And then we have two great well, we got one full blooded great Pyrenees bear. You know, I don't know if he's full blooded. He looks like a Saint Bernard. He is huge. I bet you money he weighs every bit of 150 pounds. He's a big, 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 big dog. Very big, big dog. Dog. Big dog. Um, we had a great Pyrenees named Lulu, and she was getting up in age. Yeah. And we started losing some chickens and some ducks, and we knew we had a um, a problem, you know, a predator problem. And Lulu had just gotten to the age where she couldn't control it all. And so we got Bear as a second, you know, secondary source of predator control. We had horses at the time. Mm-hmm. We had one horse who was very territory aggressive, I guess you would say. Yeah. She was not aggressive towards any of us. And we really, it took us a long time to realize she was that way. Yes. But we started realizing no chickens went in the horse pasture. No chickens. There's no animals in that horse pasture, which is our whole front of our property, pretty much. And it, it was a split rail fence. So they had the ability to walk right under. 
Well, no chickens would go in there. And so we, we started realizing that that horse would not allow any animals to come in there. She'd run them off. She'd run them off. And so we had Bear, and he stayed outside. And when we were out there with him, we mm-hmm. let him walk around. However, we had him in a secure location when we were not outside, so that way he could learn his territory. And this is when he was a puppy. He was a bitty baby. Yeah. I mean, he was he was little. And so Mary Carl and I, yeah, I guess you were at work. I was. Um, Mary Carl and I were outside, and we had him out there with us. In a blink of an eye, he was in the horse pasture. And when Mary Carl and I turned around to hear, you know, the puppy crying, we realized that he had gone into that horse pasture, and that horse was stomping on him. Mm-hmm. And we um, immediately rushed into you know, fight or flight mode. And we got the puppy out, which was bear. And we just knew that he was going to have brain damage. Yeah. No physical outside injuries. We didn't see anything, but as hard as he was stumped, we knew that something was going to be wrong. So we brought him in the house and we monitored over him the next few days. And he's fine. Absolutely fine. 10 years later, bear is still doing well. Still doing well. Nine years later, maybe nine uh, he's old. He's, he's old. Getting, well, he's getting up there, especially for his size. Yeah. He's a big, big dog. He's a big dog. Very big dog. And the thing about Great Pyrenees is they have so much hair. Yeah. They, I mean, they're just woolly boogers. They and, are. You know, some people say that that hair keeps them cool. Yeah, that's what they say. And it's hard for me to wrap my mind around that. And But the, the, a lot of your Pyrenees people say it keeps them cool. It works as an insulation both ways. So I, I, I just can't wrap my head around it. But that leads us to Foxy. Mm-hmm. Well, see, Bear and Lulu split the property. Bear watched the back. Lulu watched the front. Where Lulu was getting up in age, and she got where she wasn't protecting the front anymore, so we had a fox come over, and we had a fox issue. And so... It's almost like they said to each other, you don't go in the yeah. front and I don't go in the back. Yeah, it, it was. They, how they communicated that is beyond me, but that's what they did. Well, so that led us to get Foxy, who is a Great Pyrenees Anatolian mix, allegedly. Mm-hmm. And so she doesn't have... She's got hair, but nothing like bear. Mm-mm. And Our, we, were, we were hoping it was going to be shorter than Lulu. I mean, yeah. it's shorter than, than what it is, yeah. but it's not. But still, it's nothing like bear's hair. And our friend, Laura, over at Simply Making It, who makes the goat milk soap and and other stuff, um, they had gotten fo- one of Foxy's siblings. Yes. And so they told us about Foxy. Yep. And it was not too far from where we're located. So I contacted the people, and they said that they had some puppies. So they met us with them, and we picked out the one that had the shortest hair. But um, Weenie, ain't that? Weenie. Weenie's got even shorter hair. Yeah, the one Laura and them's got, it's got really, that's how I wish Foxy looked, honestly. Yeah. Just the, the, but you the shorter tell. hair. No, you, you get their puppies, it was so hard to tell. But we did pick the one that we thought yeah. had the least amount of hair. Right. And that was Foxy. That and we named Foxy. her Foxy because we had a fox, fox problem at the and time. And she looked like a little fox. She did. She's got a little, like fox, a little face. fox And um. And so we got her, and again, it's almost the same way. You know, which Bear's getting up in age. He's not, Is I don't know, he doesn't, he still watches the back and Foxy watches the front. But he's not as good as he once was. I That's right. Yeah. Um, he, he's getting on up in age and he does a lot of barking. But as for, you know, running after something when he sees it, he's nothing like Foxy. I mean, yeah. she, she is like, if she hears something, she's on it in two seconds. She is. And she's way smaller than he is. Oh, she's, way she's small. She yeah. looks... She looks like a miniature, if there was a such a yeah. thing as a miniature Pyrenees versus him, because he is huge. He's huge. He is huge. He's massive. So that covers all of our dogs. So we got and seven. Seven dogs yep. total. We're not dog hoarders. We're just dog people. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that covers everything um, for today, and um, we may pick some of these up on the next one. Okay. As we've been talking an hour and five minutes. Okay. So um, <laughs> and we'll save these and we'll go over some more next time. And y'all keep sending us questions. That's right. If you'll end your um, comment with a question, we can filter it out and see what those questions are. If yours doesn't get answered, send it again. That's right. Send it again. Don't hesitate to send it again. If you want it answered, send it again. Yeah, keep sending it because... We've got a list here and we couldn't so cover many. it all. We yeah. couldn't cover it all. 
Um, and we'll we'll pick these up and maybe pick a few more and go from the next time. Sounds good. All right. We'll so catch y'all in. We're going to look at oh, campers. That's right. We're going to go look at campers. Get your camping clothes on. I will. We, we're we going to camp out. <laughs> Reckon what they do if I came with my backpack and stuff. Maybe a tent and water bottle and said... <laughs> Fire pit. We ready We ready to camp. We want to check it out. We're going to use it. Try it out first. <laughs> we'll lose it right here in the parking lot. <laughs> that's right. All right. Y'all, y'all be, be good. good. Hey, guys, if you've not seen our main vlogging channel, be sure to go check it out right over here. I'll put a couple of videos over here that I think you may like. And if you're interested in any of our merchandise, check out that link right down below me. And as always, y'all be good. <laughs>